when you see these patients in your clinic and you are kind of getting that initial history, are there some key questions that you're always asking or, you know, are there key things that patients talk about or bring up that kind of, you know, help you think like, oh yeah, this definitely sounds like, you know, they're having some indirect reflux or is there, are there anything particular questions that we need to be asking that are important in kind of helping focus things? Yeah, I will tell you that a lot of this is I, I am somewhat privileged, right, in terms of being kind of the subspecialist who people are coming specifically to talk about LPR. So I do have a little bit of a privilege here in that I can sit down and kind of like really hone in on just this one specific thing that they're having. Um, as opposed to, you know, having to see multiple different types of problems that are coming into my clinic. So when I talk to patients, I usually they've already been referred in, for example, by another ENT or perhaps even primary who a primary physician who's somewhat familiar with this idea of reflux. And so they've probably tried a few things. So when they come into me, we kind of take a step back and I say, okay, I need to hear what the problem is. Like somebody else called it Globus. Somebody else is calling it throat clearing. Let's start fresh. What is it that you're actually feeling, right? Are you coughing or is it throat clearing? Is it that you're feeling mucus dripping or are you just throat clearing so you think it's mucus? Like that's the very first step of all of this is like, what is the actual thing you're feeling? Because I've had multiple times where it's written that they're coming in for Globus and I don't know about you, but when I think globus, I immediately think like a lump in the throat, right? Like a tightness. And they're like, no, 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 there's no lump. I'm just throat clearing. So the globus actually was a sensation of mucus, which in my mind triggers a different pathway of what I'm thinking about. So that, that's what the very first thing I say is like, what are you actually feeling? Let's not define it. Let's just say what we're feeling. Um, and then once we get the feeling, then that breaks it down into what type of questions I'd like to know, right? So for example, if it's a globus type of thing, I kind of really want to know, is it all the time? Does it come and go? Does it wake you from sleep? Those type of questions. Do the same thing with kind of the, the mucus sensation, right? So um, I really want to make sure that I don't think it's coming from a nasal source. So I definitely ask my general nasal type of sweat um, symptoms. And then it really becomes a, a time thing too. Like, are you noticing more mucus and phlegm after you're eating and drinking, after you've been outside, first thing in the morning? I mean, when, when is it happening? And if we can pull out some of those characteristics, that starts help building my differential. Um, and then to be honest, sometimes people are just like uh, all the time, right? That's all they can tell you. There, there, are no sim there are no triggers. It's just all the time. And that makes me very suspicious for a neurosensory component because what could possibly be happening all the time? 